There, Holmes, I've told you everything. You are correct, someone on the inside did help Lupin enter the museum, and I must shamefully confess that it could only have been me. That rogue, under the guise of a journalist, played me, and I was blind to it all. He even left me his card the first time we met. Here, look, uh, maybe there's a clue. It's a shame that you didn't show me this card earlier, my dear Watson. Our adversary is both talented and bold, more than any other criminal mastermind we have ever fought, with one exception, and he has fooled us yet again. This adventure, however, has forced him to discover something. We have the lead, and he has had to improvise. In addition, he inevitably must have had a retreat somewhere in the vicinity to be able to observe us and to hound your footsteps. He's ingenious and has certainly left the location already, but he may, in his haste, have left some small clues behind. But we have no idea where his hideout could have been. The only place we might receive any information is the Golden Lion, but nobody there will say anything to you or me. Indeed, the Golden Lion is a hostile spot, unless you use the same weapons as your adversary. Now, Watson, disguised thusly, will I do justice to the clientele of the Golden Lion? Tremendous, Holmes. But what am I to do? Out of the two of us, you are the wordsmith. I'll need you to write a letter, send a copy to Lestrade, addressed to the Prime Minister, in order to have an interview with... this person. You... you are not serious, Holmes. It can't be more obvious. This must be the target of Lupin's next crime. I must lay down for a moment. I am counting on you, Watson. See you soon. No one in the street. Even better, Watson thought my disguise was successful, but I'll have to ensure it works on a tougher audience before I enter the Golden Lion. There, there. Sergeant Ruffles. He'll be an excellent subject. Hello, me old China. Hey, over here, you. When someone with a face like yours says hello to an officer, there's something happening, isn't there? Ain't now going on, copper. I don't recognise you. You aren't from hereabouts, are you? You from Bloomsbury, by chance? I ain't. I think you are. I'd even say that you had a hand in the robbery at Sir Herman Grimble's house last night. We've been informed that the leader of the gang had taken refuge in the area, and now you're passing by to recover your share of the take, right? Ain't so, Copper. Last night wasn't me aunt feeling a little dicky. I had to fetch 20 pounds of coal in the wee hours of the night, all on account of her feet being cold. And the coalman didn't have a bag. Enough already. You'll have to watch over your shoulder, because I've got my eye on you. Succeeded with flying colours. Hello, Gov. Have you seen a bloke from the paper? Piers, his name is. This ain't lost and found. Have a drink or get lost. Got it? This may prove to be useful. Hello, Gov. Have you seen a bloke from the paper? Piers, his name is. Hey, big fella. One of your friends? Hey, uh, you know, he told me if I had the skinny, he'd be sure to line my pocket. It just so happens I've got something he'd kill to know. Tell me about it. A gent, your pal, I think he's dosed up with some chap at the Mrs Fleming's on Malcolm Street. A door with flowers on both sides. He must have a room on the first floor. Hey, when he greases your hand, come pay me a visit. We'll have a few pints and after that... <laughs> Ta, lassie, I'll think about it.
there's a chance that Lupin and his accomplices are still there. I will need to know with absolute certitude behind which door their hideout is in order to steer the events to my advantage. Size 5, small feet. Elongated shape, slender footprint. It's that of a girl, a young girl. These footprints are size nine and a half. Hmm, these are work boots. Size eight. Work boots. Look, some blood and little scraps of meat. The man must work in a slaughterhouse. These footprints are size 9. The footprints are indistinct, but they don't seem to be those of work boots. Who are you? Hey, don't be daft. I'm just here visiting the bloke I know. Hack writer. Know him, don't you? I don't know nothing. You've got a real trap on you. I'd say you're a real fink. I ain't no fink, me. Did he tell you where he was going? See, it's just that he promised me loot, he did. Hear this. I was laying low here tonight. Did a big number already, you hear? The barkeeper over the lion told me this joint was emptied an hour ago and paid up for the next three days. And here I am, but I ain't never laid eyes on you, chap. Could be that he left a little something for me in his snug. I'll just take a peek, will I? Fat chance, but if you want to earn a few cents, go tell Eddie, the barkeeper over the lion, there's twice as much as I'd thought. Tell him that little Sam is no longer in the race, and he should talk to that champ from Chelsea. So buzz off and hold your tongue, or I'll have it taken out by Eck. I recognised him. It's Rumkin, a famous burglar. I need to find a way to get him out in order to search the room without alerting the police. Their intervention would cause a commotion and any clues would be destroyed. I must think. You, Eddie? To you, that's Mister. I just been to see the Mrs. Fleming's tenant. Know him? Rumpkin? Shh, keep it down. What's the deal? Ain't no coppers round here. Oh, there's plenty. Big Bruiser, my guard, is part of Luigi's gang, and they're after Rumpkin's hide. If they found out that I've been harbouring and dealing with him, my goose is cooked. And yours too. Huh? Maybe I'll just let Luigi know where to find Rumpkin. He might cough up a few bob for that tidbit. How's that sound? Listen, you dirty rat, Luigi and Rumpkin had a, let's say, a difference of opinion. A little matter of honour. And now Rumpkin ain't welcome round here. So Rumpkin comes to me, on the sly. He just scored big, he says. He's gonna cut me a share of the all if I bail him out. It's a risk, mind. Now, if you can hold your tongue, you'll get your share too. Deal. Rumpkin ain't ready to leave his hideout, eh? <laughs> Not likely. The very idea of finding himself face to face with a striped scarf has him quaking in his boots. Striped scarf, eh? What's the score with that then? The identifying sign for Luigi's gang. All those blokes have a striped scarf. They got weird designs on them too. That and their long knives is their trademark. Helps us to see them coming and stay out of the way. Good to avoid the hassle. So, what was it that Rumkin wanted to tell me? Said it's more than ten times what you thought. Supposed to bring little Sam, the chump from Chelsea, eh? And there's many other men you lord over. Bring them all at midnight. Really? That's top owl, that. I'm on it. This may prove to be useful. This cloth, the size of a scarf, may come in handy. What most closely resembles a cloth soaked in wine? Another cloth soaked in wine. Perfect, he didn't notice anything.
It's me. I've seen our Eddie. Ah. You have five seconds to put that thing down. If I'm telling you that, it's because there's a way for you and me both to get along without getting hurt and without Luigi finding out. One, two. Okay, spill the beans. Good. Grab a bag and scarper as fast as you can. I keep the rest, and you'll want to pass by Baker Street because the rest of the crew is waiting on the other side. Fine, but we'll meet again. You can count on it. In exactly 13 seconds, he'll come across Sergeant Rufles. Right, what can I find here? It's definitely the loot from the recent burglary of Herman Grimbles. I haven't seen him since the adventure of the Silver Earring. He'd be pleased to see me again, especially if I return his stolen property. Certain scraps of wood seem to have been painted with silver paint. It's a strong wood, no dust on it. Wow, Rumpkin must have lost this paper in leaving. Let's head to Baker Street. At last, Holmes. I was imagining the worst had happened to you. It was nothing, Watson. Even though I didn't manage to catch the swordfish, I do happen to have a few sea bream in my bag. I sent off the letters that you wanted me to pen. I am in a right state. Do you really believe that this rascal would dare attack? I do believe, Watson. We'll discuss this later. I have a small task to do which requires my absolute concentration. I'll have to ask you to leave and go to Scotland Yard in order to inform the authorities that the plunder from the robbery at Sir Grimble's residence can be found in one of the rooms rented by Mrs. Fleming. Second door on the left, to be exact. They already have the perpetrator, but if the inspectors would be so good as to wait until midnight, they will find in that very location the top fences in London. Hand in the cookie jar, or jars, I should say. If you say so, Holmes. Thank you, Watson. As for myself, I need to study the clues that I recently found. What secrets are these bits of silver wood hiding? What secrets are these bits of silver wood hiding?
A cage with the wood painted this color. It almost looks like a steel cage. It doesn't mean much to me. I'm back from the station where I completed the charge you had entrusted me with. On my return, a messenger gave me this letter, which asks us to meet with the Prime Minister at Buckingham Palace tomorrow morning. Tomorrow morning. It's far enough away, but not too late. Either way, it will give us some time for me to ponder and for you to rest. You seem sad, Watson, and we need to inspire confidence tomorrow. Our audience will be one of the hardest. <laughs>